In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to paint the nose. This lesson is definitely intended for the beginner. I know a lot of you guys are trying to learn how to paint the portrait, and some of my other lessons on this channel might just be too difficult for you. So what I decided to do is start adding in these small lessons where we just focus on a few individual parts of the portrait. When I'm painting any portrait, I'm never thinking of the whole thing. I'm just focusing on the individual part that I'm painting. I usually start with the eyes, and while I'm painting one eye, that's all I'm thinking about. And after you paint one part, like the eye, you move on to the next part, maybe the eyebrow or the other eye, then work down to the nose. And basically what you're doing is just adding a bunch of small paintings together that come together as one final portrait. And this is a very common technique in painting. It's the way that I basically approach any painting. We're going to be doing a landscape in a few weeks. And it's the same sort of thing where we just focus on the mountains first and then we focus on some trees. It's all about breaking everything down into smaller pieces just to make it easier. I want to keep this one short, concise, and I don't want to waste any time, so let's get started on it. Up on the screen now is the photo reference of this nose if you're going to paint along with me, and on the left side I included a gridded version so you can use that to transfer over to your paper. Of course this video is in 4K, so if you set this to full screen, take a screenshot of it, you should have plenty of resolution to work along with. I'm painting this one on a piece of Legion Yupo paper, which has about two coats of gesso on it so that we could soft erase into it. And what I'm doing here is using a 4H pencil, which is a light one, to sketch in all my contour lines. Now I'm just drawing this one in freehand. I'm not using any sort of grids to help me, but if you're new to drawing or painting, definitely use that grid that I showed earlier in this video. Set up one, one inch by one inch on your paper and use that image to help transfer it over. And if you're unfamiliar with using a grid, I definitely recommend watching one of my older videos called How to Paint Your First Still Life. It was the painting of the rose, and in the first part of that, I walked you through the whole process of setting up and using a grid to draw in your outlines. One of the great things about using a grid is that it trains and builds up your observation skills, so in time, you'll notice that you don't even really need a grid. And if you continually practice using a grid, you'll notice that in time you'll be pretty decent at drawing from life just by looking at something that's 3D and then translating it onto your paper or to your canvas. For this painting, I'm using an Iwata Custom Micron Takumi. You could, of course, use any airbrush you want. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to be using Createx Illustration colors here so that we could erase into them. The flesh tone that I'm using is one that I pre-mixed about a month ago for a portrait I was working on and still had lying around, so I decided to use it. I'll put up on the screen now one that you could pre-mix yourself and it'll work just the same. I'm only using transparent paints on this one, no sort of opaques. All our highlights are going to come from erasing into that paper. So with this flesh tone in my airbrush, what I'm doing is starting on the left nostril. The nostril is generally the darkest part of any nose that you paint, so it's a good area to start with. Throughout this whole painting, I'm spraying at 20 PSI, and you're going to see that I'm using some shields that I made myself using a Cricut. I have a video from about a year ago or so showing you how I make these, but you can make your own just by using an X-Acto blade, cutting out some pieces of paper, or I'll have some links down below to some shields made by Art Tool. They're really good. And another great option that I recommend are the French Curves made by Drew Blair at the School of Realism. They're fantastic for the price, and they come in a bunch of different sizes. So with this left nostril, the first thing I did was use my shield to define the upper curve of it, just to get in a sharp line. From there, what I did was switch over to freehand to fill in the lower area, just to help darken it up. We're going to have to darken this up later on, but for now, it's always good to start with your lighter values. That way, if you make a mistake, it's just so much easier to clean up, to erase out. To the left of the nostril, there's that soft piece of skin that curves up, goes around to the front of the nose. This is called the Ala or the Ala Crest. And we could see here that there's a very sharp line here that separates this subtle highlight from this darker cast shadow. So with that flesh tone in my airbrush, I'm just placing a part of my shield on it. And you can see I'm just spraying lightly over that shield, getting a nice sharp line there underneath the, the Ala and the nostril so that we could start painting in that cast shadow. Just remember that when you're using an airbrush, you're always gonna get some overspray. Even if you're using shields and frisket, you're always gonna get some in some areas that you don't want. So some areas of this now may look a little messy. It's no big deal. We're gonna use an eraser later to clean everything up. Now let me back up the video and show you this area right between the nostrils. This is called the columella. And uh, you know, like it sounds in Latin, it sounds like column. It's basically the column that goes in between the two nostrils. And I noticed that the cast shadow underneath it is pretty soft, so I just painted that in freehand, just lightly to spray it in. That's going to give a pretty soft transition of where that shadow starts and ends. Throughout this video, I'm going to go through some basic anatomy here, but just understand that you don't need to know these terms. 
I had to study a lot of this stuff, some in college, but mainly in graduate school. And while I'm painting, just so you know, I'm never thinking of anatomical names or anything like that. When I'm painting, there's a lot more idiocy going on than actual knowledge or names of anatomy. I'm basically just thinking, oh, this area needs to curve more. This area needs to be darker. This area needs to be lighter. Just basic terms like that. I'm always focusing on what I see rather than what I'm supposed to paint. While painting the Ehler crest with my shield, some of that paint got onto the nose itself. So I'm switching over to an ink eraser just erasing it out. This is why I always recommend painting with your lighter values first and then adding darker values later because these little common mistakes happen all the time in painting and when it's light like this, it's just so much easier to erase. So from here, I'm switching over to freehand and what I wanna do is darken up the length of the nose here where it goes up to the eyebrow. If you look at the reference photo of this woman on the left side of the screen, you can see that the brightest area is basically in the center at the bridge of the nose and the tip of the nose. So I wanna avoid spraying paint on those now. I wanna keep them nice and bright and we'll just spray in some of this paint freehand toward the bottom here where the nostrils are and of course up along the length of the nose. From here, I'm gonna switch over to my eraser to lighten up a few areas. The Ayla here on the left side was a bit too dark from some of that overspray, so I'm just erasing, scratching out some of this paint. When you erase paint, you're lightening an area, but you're also adding in some texture, so try to pay attention to the technique you use when you're erasing. Generally, small circular motions work well, but you could also just erase in a bunch of lines that are parallel to each other. This is called hatching. It doesn't matter how you erase, you could do it any way you like. Play around with different techniques and see what you like the most. Moving along to the right nostril, I'm using a shield just like before, just to spray in that upper rim along the top, giving us a nice sharp line. Once that curve is in, just switch over to freehand and fill in the rest of the area. Don't be concerned about that overspray because it's gonna help darken up this area anyway, and we're gonna have to go much darker than what we have right now. Gonna add some more paint here to the columella, help darken that up, make it look like it's farther away. Since I'm painting with transparent paints and I'm painting very light, some of those pencil lines are gonna show through. So if you want, you could do what I'm doing now, just erase most of your pencil lines so that only you could see them, and then when you glaze some of that paint on top, they're basically gonna just completely disappear. To the right of the nostril, we have this crest, which is really a very sharp line. So what I'm doing here is I'm placing my shield right over my initial pencil drawing and then lightly spraying on it. One of the tricks that I like to use is try to spray some more paint on the shield rather than directly on the paper. This way you're gonna get a softer line there and it's gonna make it look a lot thinner. This is just a technique to use the overspray to our advantage. When you spray on the shield, that overspray just dusts onto the paper, giving us a very thin line. While you were spraying this paint in, if any area got too dark, some of the overspray got on it, you could do what I'm doing now. Just use your eraser to erase it out. This takes some time because you're basically erasing in a gradient, a lighter area to a darker area. So start in the, the brightest part, which is the center, and then work your way out, slowly erasing. And of course, we're erasing on gessoed paper here. So depending on how hard you press on that eraser, it's going to depend how much paint you pull out. So now that we have all those lines in, let's switch back over to freehand like we did on the left side. And this time we're just gonna start defining all the areas on the right side. Now I know I've said this in other videos, but my favorite trick to see values when I'm looking at a reference is to squint my eyes. So as I'm looking at the picture on the left side of the screen, I'm squinting my eyes and just paying attention to where I see darker areas. When you do this, you kinda you just don't see the detail anymore. You just see areas that are light and areas that are dark. So all I did was spray some paint along those sides, just very lightly, and that's gonna help give a very soft transition. It's not gonna make it look sharp like what we did for the nostrils. At this point, we have everything in place, but what we're gonna need to do now is start darkening up some more of these values, especially around the nostrils. When you paint with a flesh tone like this, it works great to get in all your basic values, but any of those darker areas are just gonna end up looking too orange and too red. So what I like to do to make the painting process easier for myself is get as much as I can done with that flesh tone and just kind of get those values in where they need to be, then switch over to a darker, cooler color to spray over the top. The two colors that work best are black and sepia. Sepia is a bit more forgiving. It's not as cool as the black, but the black works great to fill in an area very quickly. I'm going to use black for this, and I'm just going to go over the areas that I painted before, darkening them up. First area is gonna be that left nostril. I'm painting here exactly as I did before when I was using the flesh tone. Use that shield first to define that crest, that sharp line along the top, then switch over to freehand and fill in the rest of the nostril. While I'm spraying in the nostril, I'm adding a subtle gradient that's a transition from a dark value to a lighter value. 
a little bit darker on the top and lighter as it goes down to the bottom. And the way you adjust this is you just spray less paint. As I'm looking at the reference, I notice that a lot of the areas around the nostrils and the columella are just still too warm now. They're still too orange. So I'm using this black color to lightly spray over this whole area. This is called a glaze. It's a thin layer of transparent paint right over the other layer. Let's do the same thing on the right nostril. Place the shield over to define that upper edge. From there, switch over to freehand, just like before, adding a bit of a gradient, a little bit darker on top, so I spray more paint up there, and then a little less as we move down. Now, if you only use black on a flesh tone, it's gonna look terrible. It's gonna look way too cool, way too gray. So what we're doing here is we're mixing that black on top of that flesh tone underneath. What's going on here is that it's optically mixing, meaning that there's going to be a bunch of small little black dots on top of that desaturated orange that we use for the flesh tone. And when you look at this from a distance, you still see that flesh tone color, but it just looks cooler and it looks more natural for shadows. Just adding a bit more of this black along the bottom, help cool it down. And then what I'm doing now is I'm switching back over to the flesh tone and I just want to darken up the areas here, just the left and right of the bridge of the nose where this line kind of goes up to the eyebrow. And if you'd like to, you could add some more of this flesh tone just underneath the nose where that cast shadow is. This small dimple just below the columella and above the lips is called the philtrum. Some people used to call it the cupid's bow. It's that small little indentation there. If you want, you could add some more of that flesh tone in there to darken it up. So at this point we're done. The nose is actually a pretty easy thing to paint. It may be difficult the first time through, but once you get it down, you'll understand that every single nose is gonna be really the same process over and over. Some noses are wider, some are thinner. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but they're all really the same thing at the end of the day. So if you're just starting out in portrait painting or you wanna start learning, give this a shot because this is definitely a confidence booster. And if you never painted a nose before, this may be difficult the first time through, but I promise you it's gonna get easier and easier. And any mistakes you make are just going to help you out in the long run. That's it for this lesson, but I just want to show you one more trick if you're painting a side profile of a portrait. If the person you're painting in your portrait is looking over to the side, you're going to need a really sharp outline around the nose. So an easier thing here is just using a piece of frisket rather than an airbrush shield. All I did was place on a piece of frisket film. This one's made by Art Tool. And then I just cut out the outer contour around it. It's going to help give me a really sharp line. And then what I'm going to do is switch over to my flesh tone, lightly spray it over the top. Once that frisk gets removed, you could just paint in the rest using shields. So, you know, it's just another option. There's no right way to paint. If you want to use shields, you want to use frisket, it's really up to you. And of course, I want to say thank you so much to the members who join this channel and help support it. That includes Andrew, M. Shibley, and Dwayne, all of which have been members for five months. And of course, thank you to Pete, Ken, and Robert, all of which have been members for two months. And a special shout out and thank you to Carl, who just became a new member at Tier 3. It's very generous of you, Carl, so thank you. And members, if you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to leave them in the community page so that I can get back to you and I'll do the best I can to try to answer them in the next video so that everyone can kind of learn from them. And Carl, to answer your question, my name is Mark. So if you guys didn't know, now you know. That's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you back here next week.